had an old student uh, a long time ago, Michal Oleshek, who has a great podcast now, but uh, this was several years ago, and he asked me, he heard some story that I was a boxer, and he asked me how I got into it, and I told him the story, and it was a long story, but I'll try to tell it here in a short way. I was uh, in a new town. I had drove from California to West Virginia. I drove all the way across country. I don't know. You know, it took me three or four, maybe five days. And I didn't know one person in the town. And uh, I knew from experience, if you don't know somebody in a new town, you find a pool table at a bar. And if you win enough games, they got to talk to you because you hold the table. That's usually how it works there. And so I did, and I was playing billiards, and I didn't know anybody. And some guy came up to me, and he goes, you shoot some pretty good pool, buddy. Um, and we ended up being partners in the, in the billiards. And we held the table probably four or five hours. Uh, we were both pretty good billiard players, and, and, and we held the table. And he, he kind of took a liking to me a little bit. He was a Pittsburgh guy, and he, he liked the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he knew all about Pittsburgh sports. And then he told me that he's, his son, who was 17 years old at the time, was a, was a boxer training for the Olympics. And, um, and he told me, in fact, next week his son was going to go up, which he did once a month, up to the maximum security prison up in Waynesburg in, in Pennsylvania, where he fought um, once a month against the prison team. And this is a death row prison. This is the, the most notorious prison in, in Pennsylvania, the, the, the m most maximum security. And I kind of casually asked him, I said, Are, aren't you worried about sending your 17-year-old son up there to a, a prison to fight? You know, what, you know? and he, and he kind of looked at me, and he had glasses on, and he looked down, and he said, you know, buddy, you ought to be worried about the inmates, the prisoners, because he hasn't lost a fight up there. <laughs> and, and I said, well, you must be a good trainer. And he goes, I am. <laughs> and one of the hardest things I've ever done is spar his son, you know, and I did it, you know, a lot. And uh, when you're fighting a Golden Gloves boxer that's training for the Olympics, you learn a lot. And you've got to be, you know, boxing is not like any other sport. If you, if you don't do well, you pay, pay the price. <laughs> In fact, you know, a couple of years later, after that, he fought in the. I went up there and watched his son fight in the Cleveland Golden Gloves, and and the guy that fought in front of him was Floyd Mayweather, and it was there was a lot. Vargas was there. This was like the best fighters of that era, and his son was one of them. So the next day we're in Stansbury, and we win. You know, we had been playing billiards all night, but we probably won four or five games on Stansbury, and that's the center court in the whole university. So there's some really good players there. And I had played some basketball at a fairly high level, and, and this guy, the boxing trainer, says, man, you got some fast hands, and you got some great footwork, and, and I'm a boxing trainer, but I can't teach those things. I can teach you technique, but I can't teach you fast. That You got that, that natural ability, and I'd love to teach you how to fight. Do you have time? And I said, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I have time. And he says, well, I'd love to teach you if you're ever interested. And... Eventually, I was interested, and uh, I went down to his gym, and he taught me how to fight, and he told me how to tight fight what he called Pittsburgh style, um, and it's a very unusual boxing style, but he taught me how to fight, and uh, and after about, you know, he told me, if I get you for six months, I can make you into a good fighter, and if I get you for a year, I can make you into a great fighter, and you'll never have to worry about losing a street fight for the rest of your life. <laughs> and that's, and think about that. And I said, okay, I'm in. So I trained at this gym, uh, his gym, and it was, you know, he trained me maybe for a year, two years. Uh, and it was a really hard gym. I mean, there was no bullshit at this gym. It was all training, very little, you know, it was in a basement of some place, and it was all this old equipment. And I really enjoyed it, and I'd hit the heavy bag and skip rope, throw a medicine ball for two hours. But in between, we always talked about literature or history or something. It was a very interesting experience. And one night, I finished training, and I sparred with him. And uh, he sat down and poured a glass of whiskey, and he says, Pat Vaughn, I think you're ready for the something big, you know? And I said, what? What? something big and I said the prison <laughs> and I was kind of joking and he goes no man even better than the prison you're ready for the West Virginia tough man contest so the West Virginia tough man contest is this all comers heavyweight division 
fight where you everybody meets on a Friday and a Saturday night in, a, in an armory, like a military uh, camp, and you fight in front of about 5,000 people and you fight till you lose. And I remember going down there and I was in the getting weighed. You get weighed before you go in there and these guys all had barbed wire tattoos. These guys looked like they'd been in prison, out of prison, back in prison, I don't know. But it was like a really kind of a tough crowd. And I ended up doing okay, you know? And I had troubles with my vision because I have terrible vision and you can't wear contact lenses and it was a little bit difficult, but I went pretty far in this competition and Michal made a, a film about it and you can, you can watch it here. And that was really how this podcast got started actually. So that's the story.